Okay, so here's going to be a very, very basic sort of video on external radiation dose. So this is sort of risk of death, danger of radiation poisoning, this sort of thing. So for this one, it's going to be gamma and x-rays. We're going to do external doses. Um, and the units we're going to be using are RAD, Rontgen Absorbed Dose, or basically Radiation Absorbed Dose, the REM, Rontgen Equivalent Man, or, and all the centigrade. Basically, all those are exactly equal to each other. So what we have there is just a picture of a man being exposed to ionising radiation. Obviously you can't see it like that in real life, but there's whatever's emitting the um, source. That could be an x-ray tube, that could be, you know, a bit of cesium-137 or cobalt-60. And there's your gamma rays or x-rays flying off and hitting him. Now, an important thing to note, and this is something the sievert system sort of takes into account, is depending on where in your body uh, the gamma rays or x-rays are hitting depends on how much damage it's going to do. If you had a massive amount of radiation hit you in the foot or the hand, you might be able to have that amputated, um, and that might be the end of it. Whereas, you know, if it's a massive dose to your head, you're doomed. You know, it's that sort of thing. So, um, there is a factor of obviously where in your body it's hitting you. There's also a factor of things like, um, you know, I'm not going to cover it in this video, but as I said before, internal doses are always worse than external, as in if you've ate something that's radioactive, especially in terms of alpha and beta radiation. Also, the doses it takes to kill people, and that will vary from person to person. Uh, there's lots of, you know, different factors like that. But we're just going to go over the very basic stuff. So, because we're using RADs and REMs and that, if you wanted to just do a calculation yourself, one RAD or one REM equals 1.14 Onkgen, um, just if you want to use the old measurements. So, basically, at 50 to 100 RADs or REM or centigrade, that's when most people start experiencing radiation sickness. Apparently that's the amount you'd need to, you know, start getting, um, dropping white blood cells and all things like that. So before then, um, you know, because basically with ionising radiation, there's a very high chance it could give you cancer or lots of problems later in life. But what we're looking at here is, you know, the sort of how dangerous it is in the short term, like a radiation disaster type thing. So going up to acute radiation syndrome sort of levels. So... Yeah, 50 to 100 is where sickness sets in. Again, it's going to depend on the weight, you know, I think time of exposure and things like that. So going down a bit, we get to 500. And 500 REMS is generally when the chance of death sets in and gets pretty likely. I think for some people it'd be a bit lower. But it seems most people who die of a radiation sort of poisoning type thing always seem to be in the degree of 500 to 1,000. 1,000 basically being guaranteed death. 500 being where most people might start to die. And this gap in the middle is basically going to be dose compared to how good your medical care is and things like that. Because obviously, first class medical care, you might survive a higher amount. If you had no medical assistance um, at 500, you're pretty much doomed from my understanding. So, to put that in perspective, that is much, much higher than background levels of radiation. Because obviously, 500 to 1000 rads is more than most people would ever experience in their lifetime, you know stretched out over the course of your lifetime it's not something you'd be exposed to in about an hour's time but to give you an idea of chernobyl levels of radiation yes lots of chernobyl during the disaster in 86 would have been even over a thousand rems um you know in terms of how much damage it was giving off per hour um and you know basically if in a short period of time let's say a day or two you experienced a very high level of um radiation such as that that's when serious radiation damage sets in as said, if you're constantly exposed to lower doses of radiation, that's when you're far more likely to get a cancer or another sort of body problem later in life. But it generally doesn't result in, you know, internal sort of organ failures and things like that, like um, high doses of external radiation do. So if you wanted to protect yourself, your best thing is to put more distance between you and the radiation. So if he looks at that little man there, if he was stood there, not there, you know, he'd be receiving a weaker dose the further away, the better. If there's shielding between him and the source, so if there was a load of boxes or concrete or something there, that would be cutting it down a bit. Um, but the main thing is time. Make sure you're not near it for anywhere near as long as possible. And that's why, obviously, radiation detectors are important. Because if you have a little decimeter, you know, Geiger counter on you, anything like that, and it sounds the alarm to tell you you're a dangerous dose, you get the hell out of there. You don't, you know, sit around waiting for it to clock up. You'll probably find in most situations where people have received fatal radiation doses, it was for a lot of them because they didn't know the radiation was that high when they were there. So, you know, like with the Chernobyl thing, being told it was 3.6 Rontgen per hour as opposed to probably 10,000 plus Rontgen per hour. Um, so that gives you a good idea of, you know, why some people got horrible exposure. Um, obviously, 
with things like this, some people will be exposed, you know, if they're clean up workers and they've got, you know, no chance. That's when you limit them on very short shifts. Because, for example, much better to limit somebody to a degree where they'll get radiation sickness, but later recover, maybe get cancer, than leave them there long enough that they get death. So the idea is that you rotate more workers. And that was the idea of, you know, liquidators on the Chernobyl roof, why they were doing about, you know, a 90 second job to shovel as much graphite onto the roof as possible, because that way, you know, you're more likely to be in that category rather than that category. Um, as I said, this is just external because obviously there's dangers from things like strontium-90, iodine 131 and all the things like that. They get in you, they can cause serious, serious problems. But this is just looking at external gamma rays and x-rays, how they'd hit you. So there we go. The point is, you know, if you have a counter, make sure you use it. If you are somewhere you are at risk of radiation poisoning, because at least that way you would know what you're being exposed to. And you'd know what sort of time frames you've got, rather than just not knowing anything's wrong until your body starts falling apart at that 500 to 1000 sort of um, REM stage.